Hey guys, and welcome back to uh, Original Gaming Culture. It is your host, Undying OGC. Today we have another Hero Spotlight, and today we are going to be talking about... Gafgar. He is a dwarf gladiator. He is the hammer of destruction. He rules with the, the mighty hammer. So G Gafgar is a pretty standard uh, tank gladiator. Um, he specializes with, uh, with the dwarf race. You can get this hero for free in, in the game by playing the game. For, um, his, uh, gear and the way you should gear him is if you are not a dwarf player, gear him however you want. If you are a dwarf player, you're going to want to really maximize his command. So... I guess the first big takeaway is uh, underneath um, the gladiator set. So you have the normal gladiator set. This this set you can craft through um, recipes dropped from the void and or purchasing the one set from the Royal Archive. Um, this set will increase uh, his damage against massive units by 200%. For Gafgar, this is pretty much pointless. Uh, it, it, it's useless. You, if you go with it, you would do it mostly for uh, the command. And actually, this headgear is better overall. I'm going to I'm going to use that. Thank you guys. Um, so then the second option is uh, <laughs> we we have uh, the dragon set. The dragon set is way better at keeping Gafkar alive. Um, if all three pieces are used, it offers damage mitigation by by 35%. That is a lot. 35% damage mitigation is huge. Uh, as you can tell when I switch over to my armor, I don't have any uh, armor for this. Um, I should have... There we go. I have a bunch of swords. I have a bunch of helmets. But I do not have the armor. Otherwise, I would probably be using this set on him. Um, if you're using him for tank, then items that, that boost his... Um, his, his uh, stamina will, will help him out, accessories, what, what, whatever you, you need um, in order to hit, hit certain uh, stat bonuses that, that you're looking for. If you do not have the dragon set, you can go with the Teutonic Great Axe um, to in, in give him some type of damage mitigation. So when gearing him, if you're a dwarf player, you're going to want to max out command. Uh, this is not the most ideal setup for command, but this is the ideal setup for increasing your gold cap. Any character that can equip a Masonic Scepter, which looks like this, drops in Void 81. If you go to academyofconquest.com, you can uh, also find out that information there. Great website, it will help you out. So the Masonic Scepter will... Uh, this one in particular will give uh, 42 to your bronze army supply. If you have no research, that's two more gold units from this one item. He can do two of them, so you, you'll want to set him up so that uh, he can create as many gold troops as, as possible when, when you are using him uh, to queue up for troops. As a dwarf player, you might want to go with golden visages. Uh, they give a, a bunch of uh, bunch of command. Um, and probably the Elven Blade as far as the weapons. I should have some here. Maybe I maybe I don't. Or maybe I just don't see them. Oh, phew, I got a bunch of them. They offer a little bit of might and a bunch of command. Um, those will help out. Now, I'll show you why that will help out in a second as we go through the, uh, the skills. So this is not a normal skill setup for me. This is a horrible skill setup, uh, but I did want to show off the uh, pyro uh, pincers for you guys. So I sacrificed one of my skill pages just to show it off for you guys. So first skill we have is pyro pincers. This skill is pretty much useless. Uh, you're not going to use it um, often, if ever. He slams down his mighty hammer and deals a bunch of burning damage. Uh, might increases the, the damage. This is level 7 and it's like less than a thousand damage um, and it's burning damage which means that uh, magic resistance will reduce it. Next he has Startling Blow. There's a 35% chance of him casting Startling Blow dealing a little bit of extra damage and stunning nearby troops for 3 seconds. 
This is huge. Uh, always make sure you have a minimum of one point in this. If you do end up with extra points in Gafgar, uh, this, this is worthwhile to put points into if you have extra. From there, we have Repairman. When he's on the battlefield, all friendly mech units have their max health increased. Uh, this is a, a, a mastery, however, it only affects their health, not their attack. Um, this is uh, this is pretty awesome for your mechs because mechs permanently die. They're, they're, they die even more than skeletons, uh, in the sense of skeletons, at least Cleo can bring them back and, and things like that. Once a mech dies, um, they're gone. There's no injury for mechs, so anything you can do to uh, increase their health and their survivability, the better. So if you do play Dwarf um, and you're running mechs, because that's the only thing that, that's viable, then you'll want to max this out. And this is why you want Command on Gafgar as a Dwarf player, because Command will further increase the max health of your mechs. It also stacks with jacks. Then we have Technical Mastery. Uh, this in increases everything for technicians, laborers, engineers. So if you do decide to go with um, engineers for a front line, this is a... This is their, their mastery. This will stack with Avalon. So the this and Avalon will stack. So if you do go with them, make sure that you max out um, Avalon's Aura and the Technical Mastery. Um, maybe in normal normal PvP in the world, you might use uh, Engineers. But if you're sieging towers more often than not, you're going to use Gold Max because you're only going to tag towers that you know you're not going to lose any mechs. If you're doing Clash of Fate or the Miner's event, use mechs because you, you aren't going to lose them. Then we have Temporary Repair. This costs one of his energy points and he heals all mech units uh, for a period of time. Stamina increases the effectiveness of this heal. So if you are running Gafgar for mechs, then you want to uh, max out command as much as possible without totally gimping him, and also as a secondary stat, you'd want to focus on stamina. Finally, Gafgar has Iron Shield. So this will pretty much make him uh, very tanky for the first 20 seconds of the battle. After the first 20 seconds of the battle, he's, he's gone. He's, he's just going to die. Um, I think, uh, here we go. So at, at level 4, Iron Shield gives 90% boost for, for 20 seconds. Gafgar does have some items that will add like plus one to temporary repair and things like that. Play around with that. Again, if you want to see those items, go to um, academyofconquest.com. Check it out. And here we can see a, a slightly higher level of startling blow. So this is, again, his auto attack, the 35% chance. And will actually deal uh, a decent amount of damage considering... Um, you're not casting any skills on him unless you're a dwarf player. This will add some extra DPS. Uh, it's really nothing crazy. So let's show you what Gafgar can do as far as his active skills. So we're going up against our typical uh, bronze units. We'll place Gafgar. So he starts off and he does his, his shield, his iron will. So that what I just used is uh, what would heal up all of the mechs. From there, this is his um, his pyro hammer. I zoomed in, so it's not actually this big. Bam! Burning damage. Everybody runs away. Let's check that out once more. This time I, I won't zoom in. That way you can get a much more realistic view. I suppose this might help in hero trials, but it's really not worth it. Um, we're fighting bronze troops. If this is gold troops, it's, it's not even going to do any damage. And let's do Gafgar once more, but with max startling blow. So I'm going to get off of the, the Gimped page and go to his regular one that I use. See if the startling blow does, does any damage. See if he even lives long enough. So he's got his shield. He'll have that until the timer hits 110. And bam, yeah, get those crits out. Look at that, Gafgar critting away another crit. Wow, look at all of those crits. The, he's, so he's doing some startling blows. Um, does, does a little bit of damage. Uh, 
Gavkar is uh, is not going to be the one that carries your army, but in uh, in all practicality, if you're a dwarf, you will need him for the um, the mech boost. If you're not dwarf, you can run him so that he uh, he'll be able to tank in, in uh, the front line or near the front line. He'll be able to absorb some damage for the first 20 seconds. After that, you're going to give away a free moral boost. Um, it just is what it is. The other big thing with him is since he can equip two weapons, he can give you a lot of extra stats for PvP. So um, check him out. He's free to get in the game. You'll get him when you unlock the dwarfs uh, towards the, the very beginning of, of the game. I take that back. Uh, you do not get him that way. You will have to get him out of the hero chest. I will show you the hero chest. Uh, so if you come here to the chest, you get uh, d different points uh, or coins on the top. And with those coins, you can o open up chests and have a chance of getting the, the hero. Once you open up 40 chests, uh, you're guaranteed the hero. So sorry about that. Um, it's Grimace that you get for free towards the beginning of the game. Gafgar, you have to get from the chest. Again, don't purchase him from, from the, the shop. You'll, you'll be able to... Um, You'll be able to open up chests and, and eventually get him. But with that, that is everything that you need to know about Gafgar. Alright guys, have a great day. Make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.